Ubisoft does not realize that they're being lied to about the history that they're thinking is true. That's the same history that's being told to told and authorized by the Japanese people in their version of the book. And if you didn't have somebody at Ubisoft that doesn't know Japanese enough to look at this section and know this translation, they would have no idea that they're lying. Yeah. I mean, quite literally, this is like the woke white dude giving credence to the we was samurai and shit. Meme. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is fucking, this is nuts. There's a certain thing in here that I'll point out to you guys. All right. Today's an interesting one because today we're talking about Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft, historical revisionism, and the Japanese government. There's more, a lot more, but the hook is that a wildly popular gaming franchise, that being Assassin's Creed, after a series of very unfortunate decisions, is actively being accused of cultural invasion, a problem that an official representative is now bringing in front of the Japanese diete, which is their parliamentary government. His name, the representative, is Satoshi Hamada, and I'll get to that part later on, His but the gist of it is that an entire- cringe. <laughs> <laughs> what, the Satoshi Hamada? Or... No, it's, it's diet, not diete. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. So I'm not, I'm not here to pr correct pronunciation on anything. That'll be these guys. <laughs> you know, here, here's the funny thing. Someone who was covering this, I watched recently said that instead of Daimyo, it was Domino. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh man. Don't portray your Domino. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this. I'll point it out when we get to it. ...narrative was crafted over the span of about nine years, only to now be heavily disputed at the expense of a multi-billion dollar franchise, which attempted to build its latest entry almost exclusively off the back of a highly suspect body of work. In essence, Ubisoft has made their next entry in the Assassin's Creed franchise the focal point of a brewing international scandal. Great job. This is where I have to go through a sort of narrative arc, so to speak, and give the underlying context of the situation before expanding on how it all exactly fell apart. Assassin's Creed is one of the top grossing yeah, video game franchises of all. I was going to say they could have um, the era that they're uh, featuring this game in or were going to feature this game in wouldn't have been the best one uh, wouldn't have been the best one for the overarching narrative of Assassin's Creed. OK, the, the, the best era would have been the one where the Japanese were like basically expelling Christians. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah, yeah actually, that would have been that... more interesting. Yeah, because the Templars are basically like the, the army of the Holy, Holy Roman Catholic Church, and the Templars in the Assassin's Creed game are kind of like a, uh, basically a Machiavellian schemer-esque branch of that. So you're talking about like uh, Last Samurai type era. Yeah, with the, basically. The, the expulsion of Christianity and all that, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking it was in the Edo period, if I'm I, remembering correctly. I don't know Asian history. It, it well happened, enough to tell you. I'll be honest. Because it happened in the early, I want to say 1800s, like not 1800s, like 17 something something, but like 1805 or something like that. Yeah, that would fit because that would also be in and around like Shanghaiism and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that would have been a much like easier to translate fucking story to create a, a fictitious like tie into the Assassin's Creed universe than whatever they were thinking with this. If they wanted to go with the Templars versus Assassins thing. No, it's not The Last Samurai that I'm thinking of. What the fuck was the movie? Sam... Wait. No, it's not that one. It's, uh... It's, uh, it's basically a main, uh, plot point in Samurai Champloo, the anime. No, it's not an anime. It's... Silence. Silence? Silence. It's, uh... <clears throat> This is actually the movie I was thinking of. So it's a okay. Scorsese film, which is why I know about it. Uh, but yeah, Silence was literally based on what you're talking about. Uh, okay. and oh yeah, I Jesuits. heard about this. But... This movie was fantastic. Fucking yeah, amazing. I've never seen the movie. Uh, but I heard about it when it was being created. Let's see. I, okay, 1643 is when this okay. is taking place. Because yeah, that would have fall that would have fallen uh, right around the time that they usually place their fucking Templar or Assassins Wars and everything. But yeah, this is this is literally about um, that whole like uh, that whole era, era of, Japan. Of, of yeah with the Christianity and everything else. Like yeah, that is literally because, what the I movie mean, revolves around. Yeah, because it isn't like the first time like uh, Ubisoft would have done like a pro Templar story. Because yeah, right here Assassins Creed. Yeah, Portuguese. Yeah. 
Yeah, Portuguese it, Jesuit priest uh, is forced to watch as Japan converts Christianity or Christians are tortured to death and stuff. For yeah, where they go in into hiding. And and stuff. And have, oh yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic have... story, and it's just, I yeah. attribute that to the, the to the director. Scorsese has won me over. Like, he's yeah, one because... of my favorites. <laughs> Yeah, because in Samurai Champlo, they kind of have like a floating timeline for certain things of like uh, technological advancement, but it is generally set. Um, the story of one of the main characters is set to the tune of this entire era where she's trying to find her father and she has like two thugs as bodyguards traveling with her. Okay. But yeah, uh, this, this all, uh, I really can't wait to point out that section because like, it's an argument that I hadn't heard with and didn't know about with this. And like, maybe I'm not intimately involved, but all time it's on the top three or the top five, mind you. And it pales in comparison to franchises like Pokemon or Mario, but having surpassed 200 million copies sold with $4.6 billion total revenue, it's one of the most successful entertainment properties on earth with no signs of slowing down. Just to highlight that point, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the latest entry before Shadows, which is the one we're talking about today, sold over 20 million separate copies, making it the highest grossing entry in the series, period. As a franchise, like it or not, personally being a diehard fan of the original trilogy with main character Ezio, Assassin's Creed is more successful now than ever before, making it a focal point in the video game landscape as Ubisoft progressively increases their marketing and development budgets year after year after year, with notable success while doing so. Sure, they have their failures at times, but Assassin's Creed isn't one of them, and barring any sort of unexpected consequences, this latest entry, that being Shadows, would seem very likely to continue that trend. Maybe. For anyone who isn't already aware, Assassin's Creed Shadows is set in feudal Japan, which really isn't surprising at all after a game called Ghost of Tsushima basically copied the formula and sold almost 10 million copies over four years as a PlayStation exclusive. People have been asking for a game about feudal Japan. Ubisoft have progressively expanded their repertoire of locations for the franchise, and all things considered, it seems like a perfect time for the franchise to make that jump. However, if you're going to make a Japanese-themed game, you probably shouldn't piss off Japanese people, and that's where Ubisoft epically dropped the ball. In May of 2024, Ubisoft unveiled the official trailer for the game, and pretty much immediately afterward, things started to get a little bit weird. The story was set to feature two main protagonists, one male, one female, like before, but the male protagonist was determined to be Yasuke, who is, quote, the first black samurai, and referred to elsewhere as the first foreign-born <laughs> samurai as well. This is where the controversy starts, Bullshit. because according to an interview with... Bullshit. The first black samurai was um, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> oh Afro samurai. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I have, it, there's so many layers of frustration I have here. Yeah. <laughs> so many layers. Uh, I'll show you, like I said, I'll, show, I'll, I'll point out like what I can of the one point, but I just kind of want to see your guys' commentary on some of this. Director Charles Benoit conducted in Xbox Game Wire, quote, we're at the end of Sengoku era, in a turning point of Japan history. Assassin's Creed is well known for its depiction of the history and accurate recreation of the world, and it's what players can expect with Assassin's Creed Shadows. We're showing real historical figures, such as Oda Nobunaga and a lot of events that happened during that time, so you're not only playing in feudal Japan, but learning about this fantastic time period. Also, we're giving the opportunity to the players to live not just one, but the two best fantasies of Japan, the Samurai and the Shinobi, end quote. On its face, that's pretty good. Because yeah, I think However, black, opinions dude. rapidly took a turn. <laughs> like like it, it really frustrates me because it's like if you look at history like there's no corroborating evidence that he was ever granted samurai class because he was just yeah no, nobunaga treated him as a friend right but like he wasn't he was still a re like at best a retainer your your point gets addressed in here oh i know i'm i'm just I'm seething already. <laughs> I'm seething worse, already. The true atmosphere of the game started taking shape, with examples like this cropping up from the gameplay trailer and getting plastered all over online messaging boards and social media. Not while I have breath in my lungs and a blade in my head. I said kill him. I'll wash away his failure with your blood. For anyone who didn't this stood out to me right away, because I've not watched again, I've not watched anything. I don't typically take games on like debut. I've not watched much for gameplay shit from this game. That fucking music stood out to me. And I know he's going to talk about it right here, but like, never. Like, I, I don't know. It just seems like it's appealing it a to a different. To it. Yeah, it's appealing to a different like, kind of Assassin's Creed player now. Well, like, seriously, like, they had this in Afro Samurai, like the hip hop, like, yeah. uh, string guitar beat. Yeah. Uh, I forget what the, what's the instrument called? 
Um, uh, the, the leg down guitar thing. That, that's what I call it. It's the official name, isn't it? Uh, there's a different <laughs> name for it. I, I'm trying to remember, but it, it doesn't matter. But basically, they did this in Afro Samurai, and I'm guessing that's where they drew like inspiration yeah. for most of it because that was like a hidden gem within anime, and that's basically what started like the whole uh samuel jackson meme where he's like looking up uh, uh shit on google is like uh, it's like do you like anime yes and hentai too <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's some there's some around that so weird because you have like like the little strums of like a by and then all of a sudden you have like this really synthesized yeah stuff mm-hmm. over top of it and it just it 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 reminds me exactly of the art and like the character's design. It just clashes with the setting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, the whole thing here is that most of the music in this period was just string instruments and maybe some drums, like yeah. nothing else. Yeah. There was some no woodwinds. woodwinds there okay. was no brass there. It was just yeah. string and drum. Notice there, the background track is basically hip hop infused Asian battle music, which absolutely does not match the time period, the atmosphere, or the subject matter, except for one particular way. I'll skip over the smaller stuff here and get right to the main issues, but the general consensus around this game began to rapidly sour, especially in mainland Japan. See, Yasuke, the main protagonist and the, quote, first African samurai, has rapidly ascended the rungs of popularity and recognition in the West, but not so much elsewhere in the world. Yasuke is the subject of a Netflix animated series now. He has multiple media mentions. There's a Broadway show about him, even, slated for 2026. And he also shows up There's a Netflix series? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I had I did not hear about that. What the fuck for Tango? You're supposed to be better than this when I watch your content. <laughs> and you know what? It does all right. Let me ask this question. <laughs> this might be a little spicy, but don't you feel like it's a little racist? Like, of course it is. Like, you I mean, have, have you s- a black like, guy, we- and you immediately have to go like, I have to have hip hop influence. Like, Africans aren't allowed to have like any sort of taste in other music you immediately go to the stereotypical hip-hop yes yeah i mean just look at the people who are creating this they're a bunch of fucking college educated fucking uh weirdy beardy wokies who just go and like automatically think of stereotypes and pretend like oh no this is their culture but you're wrong for calling it out yet they implicitly put it in here it's like no this is being true you know this gets to all those points in a much better argument in my opinion. So like, I I agree with this. I agree with it, but like this guy did it in a very neutral way of making that argument. Mm -hmm. Video games as well, like a boss fight in Neo 2 called the Obsidian Samurai. But pretty much all of that recognition stems from a particular historian, a historian named Thomas Lockley. This is where things get strange. Pretty much. So this is all of what you're, you're corroborating so far, GG. Like, so it's all stemming from one focal point. So all this history is coming from one person and, and he's british by the way so that's all is right about the brits that's not <laughs> what gets shady and gets really fucky here and that was like uh, like that's part yeah, of the he, fucky but it's he, he re, it's really fucky he re, yeah he rewrites the entire wikipedia article on yasuke so that's part of it his shit that's part of it uh, he was basically there's writing a, fan fiction of history. There's yeah, more. And the only way how he got into the into the college there is because he was like he passed some fucking uh, entrance exam to teach English. Yet he's going to be looking into uh, Japanese history and writing about that. There's more. Every modern Western mention of Yasuke tracks back directly in some capacity to Thomas Lockley. For the prior examples, I even gave myself the Smithsonian article referring to Yasuke as the first black samurai, quotes Lockley directly, referencing his book, and that very same book, released in 2019, is the basis for almost every modern depiction of Yasuke that I could even find. Thomas Lockley is the premier historian associated with Yasuke, but the incredible popularity of Assassin's Creed and the anger at inaccurate portrayal of Japanese feudal society has kicked off a controversy that may undermine Lockley's entire body of work, as it forces Ubisoft to openly apologize and causes a never-ending debate online about whether or not Yasuke was ever even really a samurai. Just to get this out of the way right now, I don't personally have a stake in all of this. Assassin's Creed, to put it very bluntly, has never been tied to reality in my mind, and for a perfect example, we can look So this is Slug's argument, so to speak, right here. Assassin's Creed 3, which conveniently took place in revolutionary America. 
Yeah, I don't actually think that the half Mohawk Indian assassin fought side by side with George Washington to recover an alien object. I'm not going to sit here and complain okay. about historical accuracy. First off, uh, this is the thing, like, again, it's like the magical space wizards argument for Star Wars. Yep. But it's like, this is historical fiction. That That's the problem that, that's the disconnect Slug has with it, and a lot of people do, is that when you're doing historical time periods, it's right to get the set pieces uh, down pat. It's right to get, like, the time frame down pat. It's right to get the certain characters that you're going to introduce that were historical figures down to a T that most historians agree upon who they were and what they did. The problem here is that when you take artistic liberties to do a story about assassins versus Templars, like a, a secret shadow war between two eclectic clans, of course you're going to have some overlap. Yeah. But the main issue is, so long as like 70% of what fucking counts for historical truth, or at least, you know, historical fiction paying homage to the truth, that's what fucking matters. Anything else like these <laughs> hidden blades, like back in the times when certain societies wouldn't even have metal working, doesn't yeah. make sense. You However, guys, you it guys is have... like part of the Assassin's Creed image. You guys have got to read Necro's thing in chat. <laughs> What did you say? Hold on. Uh, fun fact. I own a suit of armor and a katana made by an actual Japanese smith. Received, uh, receive a stipend, salary, and own land. I am, an, <laughs> I am a samurai, according to Loki. To <laughs> be fair, yeah. you're actually more of a samurai than, um... Well, no, Yasuke actually... Is. Well, actually, that kind of shit would make you more of a ronin rather than a samurai. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> because a ronin is like a rogue samurai of sorts like they have yeah. no clan that they're attributed to or a daimyo or even a, a warlord of sorts you're just a random guy with a sword and land <laughs> oh, come on Dude, i have so many issues with this oh my god i like that he lays this argument out because he lays slug's argument out here and dismantles it when the entire franchise is about a secret league of athletically superpowered time travelers fighting another secret society over extraterrestrial artifacts. Frankly, the fact that Yasuke existed as a sort of blank slate historical character that was in fact a real person, but we don't know all that much about him, kind of makes him perfect as a narrative blank canvas, especially when he existed in close proximity to significant historical events. However, that's my personal opinion, and when it comes to Thomas Lockley, personal opinion goes entirely out the window. Hopefully everyone can follow along with this part. I'll do my best to make it as straightforward yeah, okay. as possible. Okay, one other Yasuke point I want to make. Mm -hmm. is that when uh, I don't know if they've done this before because I haven't like kept up after like unity, but for the most part, Ubisoft has strayed up away from using actual historical figures <laughs> or even people who are mentioned in history as the main character. Yes. Yeah. And he actually that, points it out in his most recent video. That's yes. actually my biggest issue with it is the fact that, the entire point of Assassin's Creed is we touch history, we aren't history. Yes. Yeah, we're, we are just a passenger through time looking through a lens is the whole idea of the player character. There's, That's why you can have more creative freedom with the player character yep. and more creative freedom with the timeline and events and how they actually played out. Yeah, I mean, and you know what? A, a I would, perfect example as long as the Assassin's result is the same. Yeah. yeah, because a perfect example from Assassin's Creed uh, Brotherhood because I was watching a, a video essay about it. Um, they, they point out that the bonfire of the vanities is kind of out of order in the timeline of events to Assassin's Creed 2. And was, some of the characters in it are purposely rewritten, but are trying to pay homage to what they actually said or what they would have done. Like yeah. there's a scene um, during a siege on a fort where this woman was basically holding it down and threatening is like, you can kill my sons, but I will never allow you to have like what's in here and whatnot. If I remember correctly. And she's an actual historical figure who said something similar to that. It's paying homage to uh, what she embodied. Yeah. And sometimes However, they also take the elective of like uh, summarizing groups of people in an individual too. I just want to say that mm -hmm. much like uh, groups yeah, it, of people may have actually done these actions, but they're attributing it to one player yeah because in assassin's creed 2 they had uh fucking machiavelli Nic uh, nicola Ma machiavelli yep as an assassin when he would have been more likely to be a templar yep 
if you've like looked at anything regarding his history and his philosophies, yeah. Yeah. So like that's kind of like messing around with shit, but you could also like argue that a Machiavellian schemer would play both sides against each other. So of course he could be a toss up. Yes. You know so what? they're taking they're taking like the psychological reading of a Machiavellian schemer and applying it to Machiavelli the person. So it's representing both sides. The historical version and what we see in modern day when we call someone a Machiavellian schemer. Yep. I think it'd be more interesting to have him as an NPC. Well, he is an NPC. No, I mean like Yasuke. Because let me oh. rewrite this. Let me rewrite this for you. He actually addresses that too. Yeah, because because I here's my idea. So imagine Masamuni Date betrays Nobunaga, mm-hmm. and the entire plan was that that Jesuit priest that gave him to Nobunaga, Yasuke would have been a Templar. And now imagine yeah. that Date was working with the assassins to take out Nobunaga and you fight Yasuke. And the reason he runs isn't because he was afraid because you beat him and you stopped him from assassinating Nobunaga. Yeah. Wouldn't that have been more interesting than just making him a playable character? Yeah. Tying because him in with a story mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, because, I mean, the whole thing is, like, this is in Japan, you should be playing as a Japanese player, or a well, Japanese character. The The point that they bring up, and that I agree with more, is now that you're doing this with this character, now you're going to potentially attribute things, like we, we've already outlined, actions that groups of people and other individuals that sometimes get wrapped up in the the coil of history are now going to, mm-hmm. in this game, be played out by somebody who would have never done those actions. Yeah. And again, it's like, this is historical fiction. I'm pretty sure Japan didn't go all haywire when they made the last, when uh, Tom Cruise started in the last samurai. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, that was actually like three major historical figures, uh, four, if you consider his character. Yeah. Um, basically being fucked with in the timeline. Yeah. Cause I've seen like uh, video essays, uh, basically breaking down like the inconsistencies yeah but we haven't reached my the one thing i'm really wanting here but go ahead jim oh i think too the biggest thing is ubisoft's response i think pissed off a lot of people because like if your criticism of like the last samurai is is that it didn't happen that doesn't happen okay that's well, fine. I, mean, I think a lot of Japanese people could, could accept it, but when Ubisoft gets on the pulpit and basically tells you that you're wrong about your own culture, that mm-hmm. I think really pissed a lot of people off. Well, I, that, that's the thing. Uh, like when it came to the Last Samurai, they all uh, like most leftists would classify it as like white saviorism was like the theme or like the overarching narrative of like the Last Samurai. However, yeah. it was more or less a guy who was who was basically having uh, questions of his own past and his own actions and finding resolution by actually taking the side that he believed he should have taken in the first place. Because, I mean, uh, given how there were so many similarities between the Japanese people and the native tribes here in America, because, I mean, DNA-wise, you could pretty much track the lineage to the Alaskan uh, land bridge and uh, whatnot when the uh, sea levels were lowered and it's a lot to get into, but basically what I'm saying is there is a direct parallel and there was a, uh, conclusion to his like personal story. And I think that's how they got like away with it when it came to Japanese history. I just, I think that, so the thing, I'm just going to play the video because there's, there's a point in here I, I want to make, I want to get to the point and then I'll outlay what I think my biggest issue with all this is. Asuke, increasingly popular in Western media with growing recognition across entertainment properties, didn't always hold the same level of recognition. Right now, if you go to his Wikipedia page, there's a pretty sizable entry, but back in 2014, the entry was just a tiny fraction of the size. Except if you go to the edit history for his Wikipedia page, you find something very interesting, and that is a particular user named Totori Tom, who has made sizable edits to the page, the sources, and the information contained within it. From one of his larger edits, quote, This is the second in a series of edits I will carry out following a study of his life and times. All will be properly referenced when I get the chance, end quote. And if you look at the actual profile of Totoritan, you see, quote, 
Totori Tom is Thomas Lockley, a faculty member at Nihon University College of Law, Tokyo, Japan. His interests are primarily Japanese history related, end quote. That may seem innocent for the moment, or insignificant rather, because any profile on Wikipedia can write anything it wants in the bio section. But Thomas Lockley <laughs> is listed on the Nihon University faculty page, and the account Totori Tom was adding his papers and his book as page sources before the work was even published. Here's where it gets really strange. Speaking to Time Magazine discussing the life of Yasuke in reference to the Netflix anime series, Lockley had this to say, quote, There's no record, but tradition holds it that Yasuke was the one who took Nobunaga's head to save it from the enemy. Continuing later, Yasuke, therefore, by escaping with the head, could have been seen and has been seen as changing Japanese history, end quote. That's no small thing. He acknowledges, in the briefest of ways possible, that there's no actual evidence, but goes on to say that Yasuke has been seen as changing Japanese history. However, if you look at the Japanese version of his book, not the English version, it holds an entirely different atmosphere. Please understand, I don't speak Japanese, nor could I find someone who can translate for me at this particular time, so I used Google and various different transcription tools. These are highly imperfect, but the differences here are so profound, I don't see how they could possibly fit together based purely on mistranslation by Google, so here it is. If you're capable of a better translation, please feel free to drop it down below in the comment section. Quote, According to a family claiming to be descendants of the Oda clan, Yasuke is said to have smuggled Nobunaga's head and sword out of Honaji Temple to prevent them from falling into enemy hands. Further down, there are several problems with this theory. First, no source, whether Yasuke was involved or not, mentions where Nobunaga's head ended up or not. Froise's letter is the only source that mentions Yasuke's participation in the battle, but it also makes no mention of Nobunaga's head. If Yasuke had brought the head back to Nanbanji, Froise would have mentioned it. Second, escaping from the middle of a burning temple surrounded by many enemy soldiers would have been extremely difficult without the added task of carrying, in addition to one's weapons, an incredibly large and unwieldy object, a human head. End quote. That is a very different tone than what he... Now do you see the problem? Yes, I see the problem. And, you know, here's so the funny thing. He's saying one thing there. to the Japanese people and saying, this is the history that you guys okayed. And then saying another <laughs> thing to the Western world, which Ubisoft based their entire response off of. He's the ultimate grifter. Yeah, I mean, some people were even arguing that <laughs> this is like historical revision revisionism in another sense. But yeah. In the in the animated movie Afro Samurai, the the kid that Samuel L. Jackson plays when he's growing up, yep, is trying to protect the head of his dead father, and people were saying that, oh, Afro Samurai was loosely based off of Yasuke's life, and I'm like, the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, Did this you, this, all be, all this he was I saw a head. This I saw being an oh, entirely different, too. entirely different thing. And he actually got called out on this by someone from Japan before mm -hmm. this became a big deal. This. So, so what you guys stated originally was that you thought it was bad that sit there and have Ubisoft say, no, this is your actual history. The problem is, is that Ubisoft's. Ubisoft does not realize that they're being lied to about the history that they're thinking is true. That's the same history that's being told to, told and authorized by the Japanese people in their version of the book. And if you didn't have somebody at Ubisoft that doesn't know Japanese enough to look at this section and know this translation, they would have no idea that they're lying. Yeah. I mean... Quite literally, this is like the woke white dude giving credence to the we was samurai and shit. Meme. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like the black Israelites, but for like Asian. Yeah, we was kangs and shit. We were ninjas and shit. We was we was samurai and shit. Yeah, it's literally like the black Israelites. We was samurai. This I we're, the black we're the real we're the real daimyos. This I think just it it it. It displays a bigger problem because now, now you have this part here that's accepted, right? So either this guy has to now go to Ubisoft at some point and say, no, I was wrong in what I said in my book. It should have been this, which I doubt he's going to fucking do. Or like you, you just now have an international total misunderstanding of history I mean, I, because I of be one guy being the guy. Well, you know, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if the Japanese government already has this guy in irons, and then they're going to have him, you know, do ritual, you know, unaliving. <laughs> it's true. like, yeah, but like, do you want to actually learn Japanese history and actually, you know, show what it was here? Well, it gets it gets really <laughs> fucky in a second here because he says it's fact checked, and wait till you find out about <laughs> I, that. 
Yeah. Oh, source, I made it the fuck up. <laughs> That's right. Trust me, bro. <laughs> like, I made it the fuck up. He's like, uh, was it Senator Armstrong in the Metal Gear? But Man, this, machine, bitch. this totally blows <laughs> Slug's argument out of the water because now you're sitting there saying that they base their entire game history off of a fucking lie. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. And like there there's still more to come with the DEI stuff and everything else. But yeah, the fact check thing is the other bombshell here. Time magazine. When publishing for a Japanese audience, he expresses that it's incredibly unlikely to be true and highlights his own doubt about the subject matter. But when talking to a Western audience, he says that Yasuke, quote, has been seen as changing Japanese history. Hopefully everyone can kind of see the problem. As if that's not enough, and the tipping point, at least for me, on Lockley's own credibility, in May of 2024, an article and interview in the Japan Times was published pertaining to the controversy around whether or not Yasuke was ever even a samurai at all, which said, quote, Most telling to Lockley, however, is that no reputable Japanese historian has raised doubts about Yasuke's samurai bona fides, including Sakujin Kurino, who served as a fact checker for African Samurai and is one of the country's foremost experts on the 1582 Honoji. Yeah, you want to know why they never raised doubts? Because they didn't know who the fuck this guy was in the first nope. place, and they paid it no mind. Nope, not even that. For which Yasuke was believed to be present, end quote. That's a very big deal. One of the country's foremost experts on the 1582 Hanoji incident, and he was a fact checker for Lockley's book over the authenticity of Yasuke being a samurai with no disputes? That's pretty important. Except, it's a lie. Sakujin Karino, publicly on Twitter, published a statement that read, quote, when the Japanese version of Nobunaga and Yasuke, Oda Publishing, based on the original work by Thomas Lockley, was published in 2017, the translator, Yoshiko Fuji, asked me to read it and give my opinion, so I gave a few opinions. It was just that, and it wasn't something as grand as a fact check, end quote. So his fact checker wasn't a fact checker. He mm -hmm. basically reviewed his fanfic and was like, it's all right, bro. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, I, I'm approved. 100%, my 10 out of 10, definitely real. happened. Yeah. And then said, yes, it definitely happened, but only to a select audience. This would be like totally revising the Hitler story for fucking Germany. Right? Only. Like, this guy has changed <laughs> Japanese history more than he said Yasuke did. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this I mean, is, seriously. This it, is fucking nuts. It's kind of like when the Russians did, like, uh, wrote the book, uh, what is it called? Uh, Letters from the, uh, from the uh, Elders of the Temple. Uh, when they were trying to do like anti-Jewish propaganda and that's what basically created uh, anti-Zionism today. Yeah. I mean, l like when Henry Ford was still making like Model T's and Model A's, he had like a copy of that book in every glove box. Like, <laughs> and, and then he gave, he, he basically gave a car with a copy of that book to a Jewish rabbi friend of his. And when he found it, they weren't friends afterwards. <laughs> because it was Russian propaganda, legitimately. Did Hitler you... fell for Russian propaganda, and so have so many other fuckers when it comes to the when it comes to Jewish people. Can you imagine if you got like the new Camaro and you just open it and instead of the owner's manual out pops like Mein Kampf? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, whoa. Whoa, what are you doing, General Motors? But there's like there's <laughs> actual like basis here for that Ubisoft got one guide. They really did. Well, actually, no, the whole West did. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. Yeah. All of woke media. Got Multi million one dollar yes. companies got one guide. <laughs> Noel was After right which about the, the Japan British. Times. <laughs> Times updated their article removing the claim by Lockley that Sakujin Carino had served as a fact checker for African samurai. One is a fluke. Two is a coincidence. Three is a pattern. Thomas Lockley appears to have been editing the Yasuke Wikipedia page as far back as 2015, citing his own work, which had not even been published yet. He appears to be telling different versions of historical events, at the very least portraying them in radically different ways, depending on his audience, Western versus Japanese, and he appears to have directly lied about the authenticity of his book, using an appeal to authority, as it's called, by claiming a certain expert fact-checked that work before the expert themselves had to come out and clarify that was not true, really. One is a fluke, two is a coincidence, three is a pattern. Just in case, for anyone still on the fence, here is Lockley in his own words discussing the book that he wrote. Shout out to Vast Establishment on Reddit for discovering this particular This was fucking damning. This is so bad right here. Interview. This new book of yours might read too many like a novel. This person is an actual expert. By the way, the woman talking to him right here is an actual expert. And like, it's just so fucking damning what's said here. I, I, I couldn't get over it once I heard this shit. But uh, to my understanding, you're not a novelist? No, I'm not. Um, I did 
uh, originally wrote an academic book of this, which was published in Japanese. And um, that was, I think, 2017. So the book which you would find in front of you, African Samurai, is a much more um, readable version, less academic, far more narrative, um, though it's still based on the exact factual history. It's just simply not full of uh, references and other things like that. Just to recap that, he says, quote, the book which you find in front of you is a much more readable version, less academic, far more narrative, though still based on the exact factual history. However, later on, when the host, uh, Jing Yi Li, who's a PhD candidate cultural historian of 19th century Japan, go figure, questions- You're <laughs> like the worst fucking person to lie to. <laughs> since the biography yeah, referring yeah, to like it as more the historical- argument, too, was like, this is my fan fiction, it got 9.5 ratings, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a book, and she's well, like, no, no, we this, don't do that, that wait till Wait till you hear what she says about the book, like, because he thinks like- he's fleecing her right now. Yeah, because this is like a dude who's pretending to be in the Marines only to get faced with an actual Marine. Yeah, yeah, this is like, this is like a, a, a fucking, I, I don't even know. This would be like a fucking, what is it, a colonel in like the Marines. And like, you're talking to a colonel and like, oh yeah, I was in the Marines, I went and did this. And he was like the, the leader in charge of the operations you're saying <laughs> you it's deployed like on. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a shame that I didn't know that unit. You just pulled yeah. the unit. Yeah, watch this. A cultural historian of 19th century Japan, go figure, questions the biography, referring to it as more historical fiction. He replies by just brushing it off immediately. And as we talked about earlier, many may read this book as a novel because of, well, apart from the very specific um, historic background, there's also a lot of depictions of the characters, um, um, I guess, inner development. Um, But its category on Amazon and Goodreads is biography. Yeah. Um, well, personally, I feel like it's more of a historical fiction. So, how would it define the nature of this book? Well, there's very, very little there which is actually fiction. There are various scenes which were added because we knew that they might have happened. There's one scene where uh, Yasuke is is watching a hawking session, uh, and we know that Nobunaga was was almost obsessed by hawking and and hunting with birds. So, therefore, it's highly likely. I mean, we can say probably with 99% sure that Yasuke would have seen that. So we did make up the occasional scene just to give a little bit of atmosphere, if you like. I should. So she basically like very nicely is saying like, your book reads as a novel. It should be classified as a novel. You're saying it's a biography, but that's wrong. <laughs> I like how like, like, I'm Thomas I mean, Lockley, bish. I have a, I, I, I have a I black mean, friend. Yeah. I mean, seriously, it's like trying to write the history of Blackbeard but from the perspective of a dude who was on his crew. Yeah. It's like an important piece, but he was just left on the beach to look over the ship. Yes. While Blackbeard was doing all the interesting shit. Yes. That, like, that's all That's all Yasuke was is what I'm getting from this. Yeah. Not like how he's trying to say, like, oh, he was right by his side. Like, he was like his vestigial twin or something. Yeah. No. No. It's And it gets worse. Like, and, and that's the thing that's... Uh, <sighs> Clarify here, Thomas Lockley, in the aftermath of this new scrutiny, seems to have fully deleted all of his social media profiles. So that's the solution. Delete everything and hide. <laughs> yeah, because that's really suspicious. Because, like, for me, like, he's, he was a, a retainer, right? Yeah. Well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't call a squire a knight. A squire is a squire. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's a sword bearer. He's not, like, yeah. a warrior. No. No, he didn't receive any of the lordship referring to the knighthood. I don't know what the hell the samurai do, but he didn't receive any of the lordship or anything like to, to, he just literally like, to, fuck, even like show like with fucking the new fallout thing, which I know GG loves, like, this is the guy that just took over the power armor. No, no, no. Slug <laughs> loves the show. I fucking hate it. I know. I that was very another debate. I about that. <laughs> I, that was another debate I went on against it because of that shit. Because it was so fucking inconsistent. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't fuck DG. with someone who knows the fucking shit. <laughs> that, that, we won't stand for that slander of Gigi's name. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like, so he cuts bait and runs like, so my thought process is, is like, has anybody told Ubisoft this yet? <laughs> right? Like Ubisoft 
just like, wow. <laughs> our stocks are already down. <laughs> and now this. It's like, wow. no, no, we're right here. We're right here. Quick, go get the official. Uh, sir, sir. He's gone. <laughs> what? Like what? Like yeah, no, he's gone, chief. Like this is yeah, as bad as a, as like they definitely have we weapons of mass destruction. They probably have weapons of mass destruction. They didn't have weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> they might have weapons of mass destruction. Well, we tried. You know, turns okay. out sometimes our data is not that great. <laughs> well, it turns out like sometimes the lies are like full of bullshit because I mean, since we're doing the whole weapons of mass destruction, yeah. You remember that fucking uh, hearing as to why we should have went into Iraq God, from dude, um, yeah the Secretary vaguely. of Defense Colin Powell. Yeah, vaguely. That file he was holding up saying it was filled with yellow cake uranium. Yep. Him holding that in that <laughs> kind of form in that vial was enough to kill everyone with radiation poison. <laughs> yes. Without protection. <laughs> within the entire fucking room. And we're supposed to believe, yep, they have weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> It's uh, so comically fucking farce. Yeah. It's on the level of this shit. Yeah. Well, or no, this shit's on the level of that. Yeah. <laughs> Distanced himself entirely from the controversy, but the controversy is not done with him. Posted by Satoshi Hamada as a serving member of the House of Counselors in Japan, which is the upper portion of the diete, though he seems to be more like a fringe candidate than anything Diet. else, rather than a central... <laughs> diete. ...figure, quote, we're looking for your feedback. We were consulted by a French oh, game company I need about to go on a alteration diet. of Japan. The content of the consultation is shared below in images. We've sure, also quoted sure a post that appears right to point out the problem with the game in question. We would like to hear your specific requests and opinions. Further down, thanks for the information about Assassin's Creed, Shadows, and Yasuke. Keep your research focused. Primary source information on Yasuke, Yasuke information in Thomas Lockley's book. Please request the National Diete Library to investigate this matter. Secretaries of Satoshi Hamada's office, end quote. There it is. Ubisoft, with Assassin's Creed Shadows, has decided to focus a portion of their newest title on a character named Yasuke. But Yasuke, despite many people vehemently claiming that he was, in fact, a samurai, is not the subject of historical consensus. Many experts believe he was merely a retainer, or a servant, or some form of lesser caste, while others, namely Thomas Lockley in particular, assert that he was not only a samurai, so but a legendary Yasuke, samurai. Let me... It's like, so basically, Yasuke, in historical truth, was nothing more than a slave. He's a piss boy. Yeah, pretty much. But you know what's <laughs> really funny? You know what? I want to know something that's really funny. Yeah. So he's with the party for the um, NHK or whatever. It's I forget what the full name of it is, but it's basically the Japanese equivalent of the alt right. <laughs> <laughs> so can you imagine? If Nick Fuentes, this is the equivalent of like Nick Fuentes getting elected to Congress and then bringing up, like, I don't like this thing about like the Asia. Spanish American War. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like the equivalent of like Nick Fuentes getting like into like the House of Representatives and bringing up a culture issue to vote on. No, no, no. It's like basically if this would be Nick Fuentes going at someone who was like writing or making a video game about Colonel Custer's last stand because they based it off of the dude who shot the arrow through the throat of Colonel Custer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or something like that. Yeah. Like, or Teddy Roosevelt thing. and his Rough Riders. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Namely, Thomas Lockley in particular, assert that he was not only a samurai, but a legendary samurai that was, quote, been seen as changing Japanese history, end quote. Meanwhile, Ubisoft, presumably relying on his work as one of the narrative pillars here, given that the game centers on Yasuke as an active samurai who participated in a lot of combat routinely, and Thomas Lockley is the only person pushing him forward as a hero story from an academic perspective in Japanese history, has now had to issue an apology that reads, quote, We have put significant effort into ensuring an immersive and respectful representation of feudal Japan. However, our intention has never been to present any of our Assassin's Creed games, including Assassin's Creed Shadows, as factual representations of history or historical characters, end quote. And yet, this is the same company, once Bullshit. again referencing the Xbox GameWire interview, that said they are showing real historical figures, so you're not only playing in feudal Japan, but also learning about this fantastic time period. Why would you yeah, be learning exactly. from things like, if that's they're the telling... the problem. Yeah. If they're saying it wasn't based on history or places or historical figures, then you're, you're fucking lying, because all of your previous games have tried to stick true yeah. as much as humanly possible 
Yeah, he actually lays that to... out like extensively. Like he went through every single Assassin's Creed game and main character in this latest video, and it was like fake or fictional historical or fictional character, historically accurate setting. I'm like that was yeah, literally yeah. everything. This is the exception. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like to to bring it back to Yasuke for a sec. Like the dude was m more than likely a fucking slave, and again, to bring up Samuel Jackson, he would have been the house inward from Django and Shane. Well, like for... the thing that's really funny, just to go back to the other point, is that uh, he's talking about like now there's a lot of games articles that are coming out that are basically saying gamers are racist. Because this was a black main character. And so in doing all of that, he actually went through and not only pointed out the main character as a fictional character, their ethnicity and the, their ties to then the historical setting. Going over the fact of like in Assassin's Creed Origin that they were Arinian, um, and like just several other points, including showing that this is not even the first time that there was an African American in the Assassin's Creed like uh, game uh discography and, and here's the thing like even i don't know if this is 100 percent like how they're reading it or how like yasuke was in like the original like the actual history if he was even african-american or african to begin with because there's already like part of japan's like lineage that were already dark-skinned enough to be black passing almost well from what it, i it, understood is he was traveling with a jesuit priest and Nobunaga was like, I like him, I want him, and the Jesuit priest just sold him. Okay, so he was a slave. <laughs> yeah, he basically was. And then, ironically, if you look at history, yeah, too... Yeah, because that, that, actually, that actually checks out, because the Portuguese were, like, big in the slave trade during yeah. the time in the Caribbeans. Yeah, no, he, he was. And it was funny, because if you look at history, like, Oda Nobunaga, like, he did treat him like, you know, the house N-word, but he was also friends with him, though. Like, he would bring him in, he would ha they would have, like, long talks and, like, stuff like that. So, like, they were actually fairly close, and he was probably treated better under Nobunaga than anyone has ever treated him. Yeah, so, so basically, yeah, he, that's all he was. He was a slave. I mean, you could have, like, told a story about that. And made it historically uh, historically fictitious, but again, it, it's just like they're trying to insert like modern day politics and rewriting history to an absurd extent based yeah. off of one dude. That's the fucking issue I had. And Slug's so like, "Oh, uh, JJ, you're wrong because that 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 that." And it's like fucking. Well, awesome. Necro even pointed out that he wasn't even a slave; like he actually had a salary. He just didn't do much outside of being like a sideshow act. Well, I mean, that's the thing. He's uh, like, an, an, an oddity. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he's an oddity, but at the same time, like, I mean, at that time, black people were treated pretty much as slaves. And if it came from, like, a Portuguese priest that was traveling to Japan at the time, it, it would make more sense if he was a slave. Yeah, well, odds are like, he was for the... better under Nobunaga. Yeah, he, odds like, are he came over as a slave laborer, and then, yeah, probably was not so much a slave once... Uh, the priest was dispatched. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would have, I mean, that would have fallen in line. Like you could have had Nobunaga or not Nobunaga, but fucking Yasuke show up as like the evils of the Templars and what they allow. I mean, yeah. that could have been a massive fucking like plot point or at the very least a, or like one of the themes from like a smaller plot point within the overarching story. I mean, they could have done the whole political hand reading. Slavery is bad. Like, who the fuck needs to be told that, except for the Muslims nowadays in Qatar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't, we don't need to start a jihad here. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, they could have had their politics and had a game and not have this fucking controversy if they actually pulled their heads out of their ass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that kind of gets wrapped up here. Fictional stories, like, this doesn't jive. To be perfectly clear, I can actually see why they chose a narrative blank slate for the purpose of storytelling. I don't personally look at Assassin's Creed and think, where's the historical accuracy? But when you make a game about a certain culture, which Assassin's Creed has routinely done, why would you choose the only example of a samurai who isn't even agreed on as being a samurai as your main character, and then put a cringy hip hop filter over that culture's music? Why would you make it so that when Assassin's Creed is finally set in Japan, you don't even play as a Japanese warrior half of the time, instead focusing on an outsider who brutally slaughters real Japanese samurai all over the open world, 
when every single previous Assassin's Creed game focused on a character that actually related to the culture of origin. In the Revolutionary War, the Assassin was half Mohawk. In the original trilogy, Ezio Auditore was Italian. In Valhalla, Ivor was a Viking, etc., etc. Why are you breaking that trend now? At the end of the day, the Yasuke disaster is the story of a historian who centered his entire body of work on portraying a little-known Japanese figure as some sort of legendary hero, twisting his words all over the place depending on who was in the audience at that particular time. And Ubisoft went and made half of a AAA game about it. In response, scholars, critics, regular players, pretty much everybody online has been weighing in on whether or not his character was ever really a samurai, whether or not he should be the main focus of the game, and why Ubisoft might have made all of these creatively baffling decisions in the first place, but at the end of the day, I don't really have those answers. My opinion? Ubisoft wanted to score some diversity points. That's really just what it boils down to. Yasuke happened to fit a pretty convenient narrative template while also scoring them those diversity points and allow them a real historical figure who stands out dramatically in feudal Japan for some of the wrong reasons, if you take this controversy at face value, and they use that as their starting point and unwittingly rope themselves into a culture war for all, all of the wrong reasons at the worst possible time, as people accuse each other of either rewriting history maliciously or being viciously racist, depending on which side of the political aisle you're on. That's it. That is the Yasuke controversy explained and none of it will likely impact the game at all, which is almost certainly going to sell between 10 and 20 million copies or more, becoming wildly successful regardless of what we talk about today. That's just kind of how the world works now, but now you know the story. If you want to support the channel, there's links down below. Honestly, I mean, if Ubisoft really wants to apologize, they would can this fucking project entirely. We'll just re- I, I hate to say it, reskin the fucking person and rename them. Nah, like they're way too far in development. They should just cut their losses and then like sue Thomas Thomas like Lockley into fucking poverty. I yeah. mean, that's an option, but I mean, in the interim, they could actually, I think, feasibly reskin and rename. I mean, yeah, it's gonna come out kind of shoddy, but it would at least it wouldn't flush like a lot of work down the drain. But then there's also uh, rehiring the voice actors, like getting a new voice actor for Yasuke's character in all different languages. It's best just to can this fucking project. Because who are you going to hire on short notice to deliver a half-assed fucking performance? I mean, seriously. I'm trying to think it, because it, there's another option here. It's it's not with outside their budget. Let's be honest. It would delay the game probably well, six months. I mean, again, delaying the game, it's just like, th this is such a fucking blight, it shouldn't even see the light of day, no matter what they try to f do to fix it. Because, like, I mean, one of the things is, like, in Japanese culture, or back in the day, I don't know if it is, but honor, I mean, hello. Yeah. Like, yeah. if Ubisoft wants to, like, do an overly, like, grand gesture, they should can this project and make a new one take the fucking loss, show that you're actually fucking sorry and not opportunistic jackasses. Well, there wouldn't be a loss. Well, uh, because some, this would you know, fall, like, this would fall under the same thing as a lot of, uh, as a lot of films that you never see the light of day of. And there's probably insurance right and it'd be a tax write off to some extent. Well, yeah, but again, it's like the other options are like sunken cost fallacy, you know? Yeah, it's just a matter like, of, like... Uh, and, like, even if they do get, like, reimbursed through insurance, they should donate a sizable portion of that to J Japan's, like, historical societies. It's like, look, we fucked up. They can't afford to do that. I don't think they, they could. Yeah, they can. I mean, no. hell. No, they're getting backed by all these ESG score uh, companies and whatnot. Like, they can afford the cash. Well, I'm, I, I'll am i just say this. Like, they are on bank... They're, like near bankruptcy well like ubisoft is literally teetering on the edge here like well that's they, probably for the best because you oh, I, like, I mean it's a shit company well like, that kind of plays Blizzard. into what i was thinking is that you almost would take the insurance loss at the end of making your company still look saleable yeah maybe hope that microsoft buys you out yeah or yeah. you're or you know someone else or sony yeah, I mean, they're gotta, damaged goods. I mean, like, everyone that who's doesn't in the higher ups. Who made, it's a lower purchase. Well, I mean, price. like, I know, but like, damaged goods is like they're going to have to fire everyone who had like decision making control over this game because they can't trust them after this big of a fucking blunder. That's what I meant by damaged goods. Like, the studios and the other employees, like the work base, the technology, or any other IPs that they have in their back pocket, yeah, that'd be worth some coin, but. I don't Not think, these fuckers. I don't think it would be as big of a deal, 
honestly, because there would be your writers, which the writers are probably contractual anyway. I doubt they have staff writers. If they do, that's going to be an expense to probably go anyway, if they get purchased out and gutted. Because that's, that's what I would see. Like The value in this right now would be to purchase Ubisoft and gut it. Take yeah. take what's valuable. The Tom Clancy franchises. Yeah. And just harvest take your the valuable IP. assets. Take your valuable personnel. Merge. And at the same time, when you do a corporate merge like that, you can also cut your losses on some of your people that you're lacking on. Mm-hmm. And that's that's basically it. Like it would probably be beneficial to a studio like Sony. Honestly, I don't know. Sony is like, I mean, they've completely divorced themselves from Japan because they moved their entire headquarters and made their business fully American. It's no like the game division. I mean, not like you know the other divisions. Yeah, yeah. they shut even shut down Japan Studio, which but is there, legendary. Yeah. There's no allegiance to Japan if Ubisoft is gone. Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, that would just be, like, you know, it's, like, that would just, like, uh, worsen the market for Sony if they were the ones to buy it. Because, like, the Japanese already took it a slight that they Americanized that their entire game corporation from, like, the overall parent corporation of the same name. The, getting the same company that just did, like, this humongous fuck-up of a game would just be, like, another slight and would hinder their sales in the Japanese market. Good. Yeah, but I don't think Sony can afford it because of their blunder with Bungie. Yeah, yeah they would have to shift funds around from Sony Music in order for that to even happen. And because... I doubt they would get the green light for that. Yeah, I I would see some someone like maybe... Uh, the only reason why I say like Sony Microsoft. too is, is because there's a movie side aspect to this that you could run with with like the assassin creed stuff and all that like make it like a film franchise or yep. like an anime yep. because sony owns Crunchyroll. Well, i mean you well, here's do the anime thing. well they already got a neck a netflix anime show of it and there's already an assassin's creed movie from like 2018 or 2016 but i'm saying oh, you that, could oh, so bad. how many times did they make Wait, spider-man you didn't like it <laughs> you didn't like the assassin's creed movie jim it wasn't I'll put it like this. It wasn't a bad film, but as an Assassin's Creed fan, it just wasn't I don't think anything could have reached it. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like when I looked at it, I was looking at it as like video at video game adaptations to film, and it actually like checked off a lot of the boxes that most of them fail. Oh yeah, no, don't get me wrong. It for like if you were looking at it through that lens, like it's up there, like you know, and one and this is me saying that one of my guilty pleasures this video is was- Doom. <laughs> because I really liked the end where they go into the first person, mm-hmm. like the game, like that was yeah. just like, oh, this is so autistically like, yeah, rap- after retro. yeah, that was pretty good. A- after Dwayne turns into a demon, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he gets you get the BFG, and you just like that was just like you know some gamer like full on like dopamine, right? Yeah, like they did a good job on that. Or at least on that, just alone. But uh, I'm just saying, like, from video game to film, like, translation, or, like, transition, the Assassin's Creed movie did it a lot better than most, and the one that did it better than that is the Sonic movies. Yeah. And and the Mario, Super Mario movie? Mm-hmm. I don't like it. <laughs> you, wait, you, what? I owe my allegiance to John Leguizano, goddammit. <laughs> okay, but you have to agree that that based, like that blue based, like nihilist Luma, dude, that was that was my spirit animal. Like that is me. I am that Luma.
but yeah, to just boil it down to like Ubisoft okay. and shit. My opinion, I still think they should release the game, but I think they should do it with the lens of like this is definitely fiction. We're sorry that we tried to moralize your history and release it like as a fiction. Sort of like how like we still have the old fashioned movies you that like do. you know we you don't could do that this. and then have like a statement in the beginning of it yeah we don't support this but this is a product of its time i mean i'm well, a product of its time like seriously last week <laughs> well yeah but i think like further down the line like 10 20 years i think it would be like sort of like yeah this was like literally the uh the culture war era and this is the kind of stuff that happened well, yeah, I mean, you yeah. could easily have legal write something up and literally put it in the fucking, the opening game screens like your unskippable shit. I mean, even then, I'd probably be in support of a uh, boycott movement, like, against Ubisoft for that shit, because, I mean, you don't fuck around with history like that. I mean, there's a reason why We Were Soldiers kind of got, like, the shit it got, even as a film. Yeah. I mean... In my opinion, like I said, like I know Ubisoft is in dire straits. Like they're close to like they're probably the the if we look at the industry, like of all the AAA, Ubisoft is the closest to bottoming out. Straight up, they are. So like I I think that like release the game, and but just like I said, make that statement, and don't support it. You know what I mean? Just be like, this was a product of the time, you know, there was some issues regarding the game development. Please know that this is a work of fiction and we hope you enjoy the story we told. And just let it be, like, historical fiction, but don't try to, like, look at it of, through the lens of, like, this is historically accurate fiction. Okay, so Necro's saying that he went as a bodyguard. I mean, still... Uh, just given what I've seen of like the slave trade history, that Jesuit priest probably had him as a slave, then turned him into a bodyguard. Yeah, because like no, like he was friends with Nobunaga, but he wasn't like a samurai. He wasn't like he didn't study Bushido or anything. He was given a sword, and he was like, you know, a retainer and bodyguard. You know, that's kind of like from what I looked into it is they were just really good friends. Like, yeah, he he was Nobunaga's Jamaican friend. Yo, Nobunaga, you gotta try this crazy shit, man. I mean, just imagine it. Like Nobunaga had the token black friend before it was cool. <laughs> Quite literally, token. 